What's up guys, we're back with another educational video and this week we were talking about slow lifting versus fast or normal lifting and its effects on strength. But first, you know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the algorithm. A new meta-analysis came out looking at concentric speed of lifting. So when we say concentric, for example, if we're doing a, a bicep curl, the portion where the muscle is shortening, that is the concentric. The portion where the muscle is lengthening is the eccentric. So for example, on a squat, for example, where you're going down, the quadricep is lengthening, that is the eccentric, and where you are coming up, where the muscle is shortening, that is the concentric. This meta-analysis included studies from healthy lifters who were either untrained, recreationally trained, or well-trained, they included all of them, and from males and females across various different age demographics, but they all had to be healthy because they didn't want people with disease states that may affect muscle protein metabolism and those sorts of things. And they were looking at, does the speed of the concentric movement affect strength development? So they defined slow concentrics as eccentrics taking more than two seconds to complete, and they defined fast, or they also called it traditional, as taking less than two seconds to complete. Now, it was just the concentric they were looking at. So these studies were kind of heterogeneous in terms of how fast the eccentrics were. Some had fast eccentrics, some had slow eccentrics, but they were looking at specifically the concentric portion of the movement. And the studies ranged from, I believe, anywhere from four weeks to 16 weeks. And in all, there was over 600 participants that were evaluated, and they did a lot of awesome subgroup analysis as well. And the outcome of the study was that people who trained with slow concentrics didn't get as strong as people who trained with purposely faster concentrics. This kind of makes sense when you think about it from a force development perspective. You know, if you think about the force velocity curve, a light load can still have a very high force applied to it if you go fast. But if it's a light load and you're applying a slow velocity to it, then it's not as much force. Right? Now, if it's a heavy load, you still want to apply as much velocity as you can to it because it's more force, but if you go slow, it'll be less force. They didn't look at muscular hypertrophy. My suspicion is that it probably wouldn't affect muscular hypertrophy as much simply because muscular hypertrophy is more about doing enough mechanical tension under load and getting close enough to failure on individual sets to elicit hypertrophic response. But they didn't test for that specifically. But my suspicion is that if they were doing similar volumes, taking those sets in close proximity of failure, that they would see similar results. And doing a slow concentric, it may mean you can do less reps and get closer to failure, although the overall time you're under tension is probably still similar. But specifically for strength, they did see a reduction in strength development for people who did slow concentrics. Now we don't know what that means for the eccentric portion. If you do slow eccentrics, it may not negatively impact your strength because it's possible that the concentric is the portion that is important for strength development. So we don't know that. It'd be interesting to see if they break that out further in, in future studies. Now, I do want to say that it was a relatively small effect size. So the effect size was like a 0.21 hedges G, which is pretty small or modest. So it's not like you can't get stronger doing slow concentrics. You can. I think the raw numbers were you'd increase your strength on average by about 25% in these studies if they were doing faster concentrics, whereas it was like 21% if they were doing slower concentrics. So they still, they still got stronger, they just didn't get as strong as they could have if they were doing faster concentrics. If you're somebody who cares, like you're an athlete and you care about that raw strength, if you're a power lifter, if you're an Olympic weightlifter, it probably makes sense to do your concentrics as fast as possible regardless of the load. They did break this out into subgroup analysis and what they found was pretty similar results across all the subgroups. Even though in some of the subgroups, the effect wasn't statistically significant. They were all directionally the same, which was it favored the faster concentric. And the reason they might not have achieved statistical significance is in the full study, there's over 600 participants. But in the subgroups, there may be way less participants, which makes it harder to achieve statistical significance. For older versus younger, there wasn't really a difference in strength development, at least not a significant difference. But again, it did trend towards faster concentrics being more beneficial. Men versus women, interestingly, there was a large effect size specifically for women doing fast concentrics. It was a Hedges G of like 0.9, which is a large effect size. It's possible 
that because of the fiber type differences between men and women, women tend to have less of the fast glycolytic fibers. They tend to have more of the type one, slower, more fatigue resistant fibers. So that may possibly have some explanation. I can't particularly think of it at the moment, but perhaps training those to be more fast because the women are starting at perhaps more of a deficit in terms of speed because of their fiber type differences, that maybe that's why they saw a bigger effect size. Who knows? And then between trained and untrained. Again, there wasn't a statistically significant difference, but everything trended towards fast concentrics being better for strength development than slow concentrics. What is my take home message here? Well, my take home message is, if you want to be the strongest person you can possibly be, do fast concentrics or as fast as you possibly can depending on the weight you're using. So whatever given load you have, move it as fast as you possibly can. This is actually a lot of the basis of the training that I do with Zach Robinson of Data Driven Strength is we do some heavy top sets to get the basically neurological benefit and practice of using heavy weights. And then our back off sets are significantly lighter, like 70% of a one rep max for a low number of reps, but I'm to do them as fast as I possibly can with the concentric because you're still creating a lot of force, but it's not as much fatigue. It's allowing to still recover. So a little bit higher stimulus to fatigue ratio is the idea. Am I saying there's no place for slow concentrics? I'm not. If you like training that way and you don't care about being the strongest person you possibly can be, then slow concentrics will probably still build you as much muscle. Or even if you're a power lifter and you're going through some kind of injury or pain that is triggered by velocity, which I have had, you can do slower concentrics to not trigger that pain and help you recover from that injury while still lifting and doing something that is gonna get you some benefits versus doing nothing. So again, I'm not saying there's no place for them. I'm just saying all things being equal, if strength is your goal or one of your goals, train with faster concentrics for any given load. Guys, if you're interested in the way I train, make sure you check out the BioLane Workout Builder. We have all of my evidence-based programs on there and you can use it for whatever goal. So if you wanna get ready for a powerlifting meet, you wanna get ready for a bodybuilding show, or you just wanna build some muscle, we have all the programs on there for you. We have female tailored programs. I don't wanna say specific, there are no female specific programs. There's nothing fundamentally different about how men and women need to train. It's just more about what body parts are emphasized. You know, ladies, we know that the peaches are in right now. So we have more like glute, leg focused programs for women. And then we have more overall balance for men. We also have upper body focus, lower body focus. We have tempo training style programs. We have a bunch of different evidence-based programs on there, including ones that I actually use myself. In fact, as I'm getting ready for nationals, right now is recording this video. When it comes out, I'll probably already have done nationals, but you can use the exact same training that I'm using running up to nationals. So if you're interested in training this way, make sure you click the link in the description and check out the BioLane Workout Builder, and I will catch you guys next week.